high temperature or i've got fever well i can use a thermometer and check whether he has high or not so that's a sign anything which the doctor can check and see is a sign and symptom is something with the patient feels but we cannot check it like if i say if the patient says to me he has a headache well i can't check it whether he's telling me the truth or he's telling me lies so raise blood glucose level you can do a test and check it how many planes of movement are possible at the elbow elbow uh, how many planes of movement are possible at the elbow and the shoulder joint so one plane at the elbow and two planes at the shoulder joint which listed substances are all broken down by the liver alcohol drugs progesterone alcohol drugs and progesterone why progesterone progesterone is a hormone and uh, why is b wrong because urea is not broken down by the liver it is formed at the liver why is this wrong estrogen water and drugs water is not broken down in the liver water is never broken down anywhere in the body except in the enzyme reactions of hydrolysis urea alcohol and drugs again urea here was the key thing urea was the wrong thing because urea is made in the liver it's not broken down in the liver then coming on to question number 26 an ocean is polluted by an oil spill which is least likely to speed up the rate of decomposition so least likely that means the others are more likely yes aerobic conditions more likely mixing by wave action more likely because the air is being incorporated and wave action also is incorporating it spraying surface of sea with hot water so it's speeding up the rate of decomposition of uh, because increasing slightly warmer temperature will increase the enzyme activity of the bacteria So if you add salt water well that is not going to in any way speed up the rate of decomposition decomposition is done by bacteria and fungi and they release enzymes and then digest the oil spills then shows a cell a cell so it cannot be a virus virus is not a cell so a cell is a cell wall it is a strand of dna it has cytoplasm to which group of organisms does the cell belong it's a bacteria Yeah, fungus it could have been, but the fungus would have a nucleus. This doesn't have a nucleus. Fungus can be unicellular. Yeast is a unicellular fungus, and it has a cell wall as well, but it doesn't have a flagellum, and it doesn't have a slime capsule which has been shown outside it. Plants are of course multicellular. This is not a cell, and viruses do not not a cell. They are non-cellular. They don't have anything which is a cell. They don't have a cell membrane. They don't have cytoplasm. They only have a DNA, uh, a strand of DNA. then uh, 28th by which process do producers obtain energy photosynthesis there's no other way producers are plants and they obtain their energy from light energy to chemical energy so it's by photosynthesis not by digestion not by translocation not by transpiration then question 29 the diagram shows a food web in a pond which of the organisms is a carnivore which is a herbivore and which is a producer so now that was a little technically a little difficult question as i can see it well of course four is the producer which we are 100% sure that four is a producer but what else is a producer let's look at the other things which are producers one is a plant that is also a producer so four or one had to be a producer So these are the two all possibilities that we had, but then let's look at what is a herbivore. A herbivore. The choices were eight, six, three, two. Are they herbivore or not? Let's check these out. And then carnivore are the ones which eat the herbivores. So which of the organism is a carnivore? So the answer was B, which was seven, was the carnivore. Why? Because it is eating those little snails. And six is a herbivore. Why six is a herbivore? So we are talking of seven, and we are talking of six, because six is eating this plant. 
this arrow coming from there is coming to 6 so this plant is being eaten by these by also by 5 that's a herbivore as well and also by the duck so the duck is a herbivore as well the duck is eating this plant this is also a herbivore and then eating these plants so this is duck is a herbivore as well two is a herbivore as well so there were possible answers and you have to figure this but the carnivore was i think the technically the difficult one how was seven a carnivore seven was a carnivore because it was eating those uh, insects so they purposely made this a little critically difficult and made those funny looking shapes so question number 30 the diagram shows part of the nitrogen cycle which process is carried out by decomposing bacteria wherever ammonia is being made. Decomposition results in the formation of ammonia ions. Decomposition results in the formation of ammonia ions. So just look at it where the arrows are coming into the ammonium. So atmospheric nitrogen to proteins and bacteria and then ammonium to bacteria die decomposing and all that. But there is no label there. So D was the answer to that which is ammonium ions proteins plants proteins and then ammonium ions and all of course and then ammonium ions to nitrates would be nitrification so which process is carried out by decomposing bacteria so wherever ammonium ions were being formed that was decomposing bacteria which method of control could not be effective against the spread of malarial parasite Mosquitoes spread the malarial parasite. So drainage of swamps and marshes would of course, yes, because the mosquito now will not be able to lay their eggs and sleeping under mosquito nets again would uh, be effective against the spread. You have to, when it says not effective, then what you have to look for is the three which are the correct, which are the effective ones. Here it was says which method of control is not effective. So the other three are effective. So you have to look at the other three which are effective. And then you'll figure out if it's effective, okay, this one is not the answer. Second one, not the answer if it's effective. So sleeping under a mosquito net is effective. Draining of swamps is effective. And spraying of walls and houses with mortin spray like we do when there are a lot of machers in our room and lots of mosquitoes in our room. And we do that very often. I usually have a tin of a can of mortin in my room. And if at night I feel some buzzing around in my ears, I immediately spray it. So uh, it does... It is controlling the spread of the malarial parasite because we are controlling the uh, female Anopheles mosquito, the vector is going to spread the disease. Then coming on to question number 32, a farmer spread inorganic fertilizer on his fields in a valley bordering a river. During heavy rainfall, the fertilizer leached into the river. Several days later, the fish in the river started to die. Poor thing. Which sequence of events led to the death of that fish? So, Plant growth in the river, yes. Number of dead plants, yes. Number of bacteria, yes. Amount of oxygen decreased. Because what happens in eutrophication? Algae grow. Algae die. More food for bacteria. Bacterial numbers increase. Bacteria respire. Use up the oxygen in the water. Fish start to die. So that is the sequence of events. Then coming on to question 33, an insect carries pollen from one flower to another full flower on the same plant. What is the type of reproduction and what is the type of pollination in this plant? It's sexual and it's self-pollination. Yes, clear, it was from the same plant. 34, the diagram shows the life cycle of a species of plant. During which stage does meiosis reduction division occur? So when the mature plant is forming the pollen, pollen is produced by meiosis because pollen is the male gamete. And that is what pollen is made is by meiosis. Uh, pregnant women are advised to eat a diet with enough protein, calcium and iron for the developing baby. Which needs are supplied by these constituents of food for the baby's bones, growing tissues and red blood cells. So bones, which needs are supplied by these constituents of food for the baby's bones, growing tissue and red blood cells. So calcium is needed for the bones, protein is needed from the growing tissues and red blood cells. We need iron. We don't need it for the red blood cells, but we need it for the hemoglobin. The hemoglobin, which is inside the red blood cells, and we can't have red blood cells without hemoglobin. 
Then coming to question number 36, how are sperm cells different from egg cells in size and number? Size of the uh, sperm is smaller and the number of sperm cells is much more as compared to the ovum. There's only one egg cell produced every month and there are millions of sperms produced every day. Then the grid shows the alleles and offsprings of four pairs of parents. Which grid shows co-dominance among the offsprings? So here it was A and A and A and A. Then here it was A, A, A and O. And wherever there is AB, that is the one you've got to figure out. So this was the one where there was an AB and that is called co-dominance. When A and B both show their effect, that would be co-dominance. Then coming to 38, what is the primary function of DNA? Controls the production of protein. This is the syllabus point which they have given you. This is the exact words of the syllabus controls the production of proteins. Then question 39, two individuals are heterozygous for a particular gene. Which statements about their offsprings are correct? Their offspring may show two phenotypes as a result of this gene. Yes, they can be this, which is one phenotype. This is also the same phenotype, this. And this is the different phenotype. Phenotype means the physical characteristics. Offsprings with the recessive phenotype will be homozygous for this. Yes, those which show this character will always be homozygous. Their offsprings have a 50% chance of being heterozygous. Absolutely correct. 50% chance. So it was 1, 2, and 3. All three were correct. Question 40, the height of 500 pea plants of the same age were measured to the nearest 20 centimeter. The results are shown in the chart below. So there was 141 to 60, 61 to 80, 81 to 100. And there were none of this range. Then there were this range, this range. So what are they? How many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we can put them into 9 categories. Variation in height of these plants show what? Yes, there's continuous variation as far I would have seen. But because we are able to put it into nine distinct categories, then there's continuous and discontinuous. So they gave you this a little trick question, I feel. So it would both because you could put it into nine categories. And but there was continuous variation because there's not just distinct one or two types or three types, but there were nine categories. So there is continuous and discontinuous variation. A difficult question. I would have said most of the students would have got this wrong. So uh, that finishes this video and uh, thank you very much.